the curricular fair in fairs, curricular fairs in South Africa, the first one that was ever held, had three curricular providers at it. Huh? It's now 20 years later, there's 3,000 curricular providers. I mean, 300, 300, so not 3,000, what I'm saying. 300 curricular providers. Now, a few years later, what is it going to look like? How many in America? 30,000 to choose from in the States. What is it in Namibia? How many curricular providers in Namibia? Zero. Stand up, hallelujah! <laughs> that is how it should be. You shouldn't have to go to a fair. Don't feel like, oh, well, the South Africans have got this, and oh, the Americans have got that. No, no. I've come to tell you that you have a gift, that you have a fantastically beautiful, wonderful, glorious, pressured, precious to be protected gift. And that is simplicity. And that is nothingness. Because when we flew in an aeroplane, from Johannesburg Airport, and we left South Africa, and we started crossing the Botswana airspace, what did we see? It was a clear, clear day, and the pilot flew low. That was God's plan, I think, because what did I see from there to here? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw nothing. It was barrenness below for hours in the sky. Nothing, 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 nothing. Jamie goes, Look, there's a road. <laughs> and where was the road going? Straight. Okay, there was not a bend, a dip. Straight. Narrow, no rises, no dips, no nothing. Straight. Straight and narrow. And he says to you, Namibian people, can you see this? Can you see what I ha where you are? Where are you living? What have you got here? You've got nothing. Do you know what a gift that is? Do you know how 18 months ago God told me to come and tell you this? And I thought, I don't need to tell them that. They know it already. But it seems to me on arrival that you've forgotten. It seems to me that you've, that now I've understood only since I got here and this pressing to go there made no logical sense whatsoever. The last place I would be going to tell the Namibians, uh, the last place I'd be going to tell this message to is to Namibia. The last place on earth that I know. But yet God says, go to Namibia. I think the Americans, talking to the Americans now, <laughs> I think the Americans need a piece of this paradise, a piece of this heaven in their hearts. That's where I think I need to be going to tell. I need to be going to tell America and Americans, you need nothing because you have him. If you've got him, you've got everything. The Namibians have got nothing. They've got it. But what are they doing? What, what are they doing? running this way and that way, and looking. Oh, but we need this. Oh, we need that. Looking everywhere, everywhere but what he's done. Barrenness in a straight, narrow path. I mean, it's done for you. He, he did it. It's done for you. You don't need anything. You don't need these books. I'm organizing courier for you because, you know, you need some help along the way, blah, 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 all that stuff we spoke about earlier. But actually, actually, if you raised these children of his in this land, with him and them and you and nurturing, what kind of adults are they going to be? What kind of gift, priceless, precious gift do you have here in this country of nothing, of simplicity? Have you any idea the kind of adult? Some of you are born and bred in Namibia. You are different. What you have is a reflection of Christ that is untainted. It's not, it's not, it's not um, got all the stuff. It's got, it doesn't have all the world attached to it. Right? Bridget was sharing some of her upbringing that she lived, was raised in Skusi Skus or something. Tsumun. <laughs> she was raised in Tsumun. 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 And then Karabib. Well, anybody who's watching this at the moment, let me tell you, Karabib, you've got to keep your eyes wide open the whole way through, don't blink, because it'll be gone. Okay, this is where this mum was raised. 
in a town that has nothing. Nothing. Okay? That is what she has to cherish. She has to hold that dear. When she was sitting and talking to her children about her upbringing, that is what her children need to hear. They need to hear simplicity, trusting God, the value of being able to know that we have God and that this, you know, that's what they need to hear. That is what God wants you to hear and to take a hold of and to embrace and to really have the courage, which you don't have, because none of us do. I don't. I don't have the courage to walk what I've walked. But Christ in me is never short of courage. If I even feel my courage in my flesh, ah, go to Christ, enough courage. Okay? So you might not have the courage. One of the moms in the tea said that this lady didn't have, how's that expression? Guts. She didn't have guts to do it, to do this home education thing. Can you see how far we've come? That we've actually got to try and build up courage to do the very thing that is so natural and so just given to us without any effort. You were given a child, you didn't have a curriculum to teach them your language. It was given to you inherent in you, a mother. God gave you the gift of motherhood. You didn't have to go to college to learn to be a mother. You didn't have to get a degree to learn to be a mother. When people ask my mother, what does she do? She didn't say I'm a housewife. She said I'm busy with some degrees at the moment. <coughs> my one degree is a very, very difficult, challenging degree. It's called Andrew. <coughs> that was her one son. Okay? So... The thing is, is that, that you have what you need, first of all, if you have Christ. Of course, if you don't have Christ, well, then, then I need to pray for you. Because then you need to come to know him. Because once you have him, you have everything you need. Okay? Once you have him, you have the instinct. Is it not so? You know when your one child's a little bit off. Where's the curriculum? Where's the book that you're going to run to to find out? I don't know what to do. He's, you know, he looks a bit, he's behaving a bit badly. Run to the book. Actually, let me tell you, that's what you started to do, didn't you? You started running to Google or whatever, the World Wide Web or whatever, for the answers. Mistake. Run to him. But what's happened is this big world has become smaller and smaller and smaller, and now you are being tainted, you in Nam Namibians, by the outside world. And yet you've got this gift of this place living in the desert where you've got nothing. And it's exactly what he wants you to have. He wants to do a work here in this, in this land, in this place called Namibia. He wants to do a work in each one of you and your children, your, the children he's given to you to say, raise them in this land. They're in this land. Don't move. Don't run away. Don't think, oh, well, it's so tough for us Namibians. No, no. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the hardships. They help us to grow in you. Thank you for this journey. Thank you that we can um, raise our children in simplicity and purity. And don't get them to learn off this, the, the, the world out there because you're giving them a taste of, look what's out there, but you can't have it. See what's out there. Oh, but shame, poor us. We live in Namibia. We can't get that. It's so tough on us. You know, you show them and then you tell them they can't have it. Is this right? I mean, I've, I've only been in this country a couple of days and I don't actually know these facts, right? And we haven't had any discussions about it, like I'm um, staying at Bridget's home, but we haven't had any discussions because we've had other things going on. And so I'm just being bold here. And I don't, I'm not accusing you. I'm not, I'm not finding fault with you. I'm just saying this that's been pressing on my heart for 18 months. I should have been 18 months ago to stop the 18 months that have just passed. But, but you've heard the resistance of us trying to get here. And it's to bring this word, to say, please, please, this is what God told me. I can say it in one sentence only. Go tell them about my simplicity. Go tell them to stop looking left and looking right. Look to me. Go tell them. Go tell them about the gift that I have, that, 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 that they have, First of all, that they have. Secondly, what does he want to do with these children that he's entrusted to your care? He's got a, a plan for these children that cannot be accomplished in New York. The plan in New York's another one. 
Okay? The Americans uh, that, have, that are raising, home that are raising their children through home education, that's another plan. It's different. It's not this plan. This plan is a very, very specific purpose of God. And the purpose is seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, right standing with God. The things he will add, if he thinks you need them, which you probably don't, but if you're really battling, he's a gracious, kind, patient, loving, caring father, and he will bring the thing on your path, like bringing Blue Book onto my path miraculously, so I could have something to eventually help my child to read because she couldn't read, and she's 12 years old, and she still can't read. Well, that was then. And, and we did Blue Book three times over. Now she can read. So I had a helping hand. Okay? But I do not doubt for one minute that she wouldn't be reading anyway, regardless of what I had and what I didn't have. Because he needs her to read. And it would have happened somehow or other. Trust him. Trust him and please look at that long, straight, narrow left, right. I mean, when we drove in here today, you look over there and there's sand. And you look over there and there's sand. God made this country. You know what I said to Bridget a long time ago, maybe more than a year ago? It was the first contact I think I had with her, 18 months or more than that, I don't know. And I said to her, you live in God's favorite place on earth. Do you remember me telling you that? You live on God's favorite place on earth. I, I have that sense in my spirit that this is God's favorite place on earth. I, I, I just believe that. N Namibia specifically. So to me, you living in God's favorite place on earth. That's the sense that I have in my spirit. I might live in a forest and all the beautiful things and all the go to fair and there's 3,000 curriculum providers or 300, whatever the number might be. I might have all that at my fingertips. I don't want any of it. And I don't need any of it. And you have nothing. The way God made it to be. And to me, his spirit is at peace in such a place. Think about it. 